Now in this video, I want to talk about sets. Sets are very important and ubiquitous in mathematics, and what I want to do here is just give you a sense of what is a set, the basic concept behind sets in mathematics, and some of the uh, common notation and terminology and operations on sets um, so that we get a feel for how they work. So um, the idea of a set is that um, it's just some objects considered together. So this is kind of vague. What do I mean by objects and what do I mean by considered together? Well, by objects I mean really anything. So you could have the set that contains the colors red, blue, and green. And here we already have our first uh, bit of notation, these two curly braces um, tell us uh, we're making a set. So when I put things together, separate them by commas, and put curly braces around it, what I mean is the set that contains these three colors. And so all I mean by considered together is just this. I'm putting them together. I want you to think of them as one unit, as a set. And I can even give this set a name. I call this the set A. So A is a set that contains three colors. Of course, there are lots of other sets, some of the more familiar sets, like, for example, the set of numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. This is a set. It has five numbers in it. Numbers are familiar objects. The set is a different type of object. I could give it a name if I wanted to. I could call it B. This is just naming it. And uh, now I have not just these five numbers, but also a new object, which is the set of those five numbers. I think of it as a single thing, but it has this internal structure. That's all a set is. Now I write things like, um, I might write something like 2 is an element in B. So 2 is an element in or of B, or sometimes just say 2 is in B. And so here I'm just using this Greek symbol epsilon, and what it is is it tells you um, this object is one of the things inside this set. So this checks out. 2 is indeed an element in the set B, whereas uh, 3 is not an element in B. And that's how you write that. So, um, to reiterate, a set is just some objects considered together. There's no real restriction on what those objects could be. I could have a set that includes the color red, the number four, um, maybe a square, and the concept of addition, or the function that represents addition. Uh, and it's a kind of a weird set, but in principle, I could consider these objects together. Um, normally, we consider uh, sets of more familiar things, like sets of numbers, or sets of functions, or sets of sets. But the point is that there's no theoretical restriction on, on it. Now, um, an important thing to note here is, well, maybe two things. Uh, two sets... count as equal um, exactly when they contain the same elements. So that's just to say the set of 1, 2, 4 is not equal to the set of 1, 2, 3, because although they have some overlap, they don't contain exactly the same elements. An important related point to this is that order doesn't matter. In other words, the set that contains the points 1, 2, 4 is equal to the set that contains the points 4, one, two. Because the order here is just a, an artifact of the way I happen to write it down for you, but the set itself doesn't keep track of the order. The set is just 
these three things considered together in no particular order. So these count as the same exactly because they contain the same elements. And the third point, also along these lines, is that um, you can't count the same object more than once. So that's just to say the set that contains 1, 2, 4 counts as the same as the set that contains 1, 2, 2, and 4. Because this fact that I listed 2 twice intuitively does nothing. I'm telling you which numbers are in the set, and this is just redundant. I said 2 twice, but the numbers in the set are just 1, 2, and 4. There's not like an extra copy of 2 that counts as being in the set. So as far as sets are concerned, they don't count copies, they don't care what order, and they're equal exactly when Two sets are equal exactly when they contain the same elements. And this is the sort of basic layout of, um, uh, of, of sets. Now I want to talk briefly about some operations on sets. So, um, One key operation is called intersection, and that's written like A intersect B. And the idea is that this is um, all elements in both A and B. So an example would be if I write down the set that contains 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 and I intersect that with the set that contains 2, 4, 6, 8. And what this gives me is all the elements that are in both of these. So 2, 4, and that's it. Because 1, 5, and 7 are on this side, but not on this side, and 6 and 8 are on this side, but not on this side. So their intersection is just 2 and 4. Um, and the picture of that that you often see is if you have two sets, and I draw it sort of graphically, this is my set A, and this is my set B, the intersection is everything which is in both A and B, this overlap here. And the other operation that I want to introduce you to in this video is called union, and that's written A union B, so it's like the upside down symbol from intersection. And this is all elements in either A or B. So if I go back to the same example, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, union, 2, 4, 6, 8. Then what I get is everything that's in either one of these two sets. So I get 1, 2, I don't get 3 because it's not in either one, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And notice that even though some numbers like uh, 4 or 2 occur twice, I only put them once in here because sets don't count multiple copies of the same object. And the picture of union, again, if I have my set A and I have my set B, union is just everything that's in either one. So the union of two sets is drawn like this. So that's the fundamentals of set theory. What's the idea of a set? Um, what's the basic properties of how sets work? and two operations, intersection and union.